There's a general consensus among community fans that the Troy and Britta relationship felt forced, that their pairing didn't make sense. As Jeff Winger says in season 5, be the most boring thing to happen here since Britta dated Troy. But I think that Troy and Britta have the most promising romance in the show, and that their chemistry was wasted. The Trita relationship failed because the writers didn't stay true to, or likely didn't even recognize, the essence of their love. Simply putting together two characters isn't enough. You have to understand and harness why they're good for each other. The charge we see between Britta and Troy comes from how they draw out and explore undiscovered parts of one another. I feel like I'm seeing a whole different side of you. They inspire and help each other to change, to grow. We should look at this as an opportunity. Interpretive Dance is the first episode that showed us the possibility of Britta and Troy as a romantic pairing, and to me it captures what's so compelling about the couple, and community as a whole. In the episode, each learns of the other's secret enthusiasm for dancing, and bond in their shared shame and passion. They're ashamed because both of them are perceived as invulnerable. Britta's forthright and rebellious personality pushes her outside of traditional femininity. That is the ladies' room, Britta. But if you can't learn to be soft in there, you need to pee alone. I peed alone my whole life. Women have always hated me and makes people see her as severe. Why waste your time envying my gift for levity when there's so much you could be doing with your natural talent for severity? You know what? My prank is gonna cause a sea of laughter and I'm gonna watch you drown in it. That a girl. Conversely, Troy is pressured within the confines of traditional gender roles to preserve the hypermasculine ideals of stoic detachment and toughness. And how about I pound you like a boy? That didn't come out right. When Troy retreats from the metaphorical and literal spotlight, Britta confronts him, saying, you're a dancer, Troy. It's who you are. And it's this simple exchange that unintentionally hits the whole core of their romance. Troy and Britta find things in one another and bring these things to life. In this case, while the rest of the world boxes them in to superficial perceptions of jock and bitch, Britta specifically tells Troy that she sees past that and she sees more. That's why when the pair finally take the leap and dance, it's so magical. They expose and express themselves together, and in Pierce's words, the result is theatrical dynamite. We catch this magnificent glimpse of their true potential as lovers. They connect and drive one another to become something greater than themselves and become greater versions of themselves. This theme continues on into the second season, as Britta and Troy's common yearning for emotional exploration and expression unites them again in Sean Garrity's acting class. Uh, for homework, drink a glass of cognac in a bathtub. Troy struggles with insecurity and his lack of emotional depth, and Britta relapses into her habitual cycle of seeking broken men who mirror her own broken self. But is attracted to men in pain. It helps her pretend to be mentally healthy. Really? Yeah. I hadn't noticed. Troy. Although their interactions in the story hinge on a deceit, at the end they come together again to support one another and help confront heretofore unnoticed or unchallenged parts of themselves. Britta opens up about her toxic patterns. He accused me of only being attracted to a certain kind of guy. And Troy meets her honesty by comforting her, assuring her that a healthy future is possible. Maybe someday you'll fall for someone who's healthy. Someone who, other than his irrational fear of automatic toilets, is normal. He then demonstrates what healthy looks like by taking responsibility for his lie. My uncle never stuck his finger in my plop plop. <gasps> I know, I'm bummed about it too. And owning his the pain of not having enough pain. I want to be interesting. I want to fit in with you guys. I want to be able to be an actor. There's a cyclical causation here. Britta inspires Troy, Troy inspires Britta. One complements the other. They're two sides of the same coin revealing hidden sides of itself, like some kind of hyperdimensional geometry, twisting and unfurling and transforming with a cosmic beauty that then transforms the world around it. I'm sorry for rambling. I just really love Troy and Britta. You're gold blooming. Gold blooming? <laughs> I, uh, I, I don't know what that means. In Timeline 3 of Remedial Chaos Theory, Troy and Britta share a private, intimate moment of mutual consolation after being hurt by Jeff. You might say, big deal. Multiple timelines pretty much make their precious moment a statistical inevitability. Besides, it technically didn't even happen. But their meeting was a little more than chance, and while it didn't actually occur in the main timeline, it still gives us insight into what's there between Britta and Troy. 
It's more than a chance encounter because we see that Troy knows where Britta is. Bitch, you get oh, it. Shit. Oh, shit. I betcha I can make that ass. Yeah. Therefore, his run to the bathroom is a deliberate choice. Critically, he doesn't pull aside his best friend Abed for support. Who is it? Troy. Um, <coughs> washing my hands. Good, then I can come in. In distress, he goes to Britta for guidance. Then why is Jeff always picking on me? Who reassures him of his maturity. He's butting antlers with you because you're a threat now. You've got your own place, you've got a future. And encourages him to be a more open and sensitive man. His whole personality is based around guarding himself. You don't have to be like that to be a man. Troy's positive influence on Britta in this situation is a little more unintentional, but nevertheless profound. He responds with a simple admission of admiration. You're really cool, Britta. But put it in context with her reason for going to the bathroom. No. Set. No. Set. No. Set. No. Set. No. Here is someone who feels she needs to dissociate, distance, detach herself. Someone who feels she needs to alter her consciousness in order to comfortably engage with her supposed friends. Show this person just a little bit of appreciation and what happens? Although Britta still gets high in that timeline, Troy by making her feel valued, takes away her need to get high. Who cares? <laughs> 11 episodes later, or 12 depending on your count. Didn't they say 304? No, 303. I wrote it down twice. We return to Britta's self-loathing and Troy's appreciation. Well, his full-blown affection for her. Just like he's learned over the past three years, with Britta by his side at major points of those three years, Troy taps into his feelings and expresses them. And he does so to show and offer Britta healthy love, exactly like he told her a year before. Maybe someday you'll fall for someone who's healthy. Britta then learns to embrace the open-hearted for a change. It's not even clever. You keep using it as the word change. Rather than dismiss it in favor of the futile, paradoxical pursuit of the closed off and isolated. Now, I would hesitate to say that Britta, or anyone for that matter, precisely needs this kind of external validation to overcome their issues. Like the winger speech teaches us in the same episode. None of us have to go to anyone. But it is a wonderful thing to find refuge in others, and in Season 3, we see how Troy can be that refuge unlike any other in the group. Troy and Britta are an enchanted garden. No, not that one. They unearth one another, plant roots, clear thorny patches, fill holes. They nourish one another with sunshine and rain showers and fresh air blossoming. Troy and Britta are growth. You're the best. Troy and Britta is life. The examples I used here mainly involve the two opening themselves up emotionally, and I wanted to see them grow well, and explore and actualize with each other in other aspects. Of course, we didn't get any of that. There were no Troy and Britta stories as a couple. I'll discuss this in part two of the defense, but right now I want to urge something of the creators. We got six seasons, so if Donald Glover returns for a community movie, please revisit the Troy and Britta relationship and focus on the garden. Thank you.